I just finished watching the Investigation Discovery six-part series, The Curious Case of Natalia Grace, and let me tell you what, I've got opinions on everyone in it and everything about it. So we're going to talk about the highlights of it in today's video. Sofa Squad and welcome back to the sofa which is still behind me with Mr. Roscoe P. Coltrane. Now he's actually sleeping. He is not cleaning his feet for this video. If you've been watching me for a while then you know that Roscoe typically likes to give his feet a bath while I am filming. Now what we're going to be doing today is talking about the six-part series on Investigation Discovery and before we even start Buckle your seatbelts up, the sofa seatbelts, because this one is a damn doozy. I fell off the sofa several times. Here's the thing. Just very quickly, we're going to, you know, do our little usual thing we do here. We're going to do the, like, 60 second, this is what the case is about. The way the video will happen or work, the structure of it is I'm just going to basically treat this one more like a podcast. If you follow me, you know I usually do, like, a lot of video clips and that kind of thing. Y'all, the copyright strike thing was too much on this one, so I've just made notes, and we're going to talk about those that way. Now, I will be putting pictures up and whatnot, and again, I'm just mostly talking about what I consider, like, the highlights to me. If you are able to watch this, I, I highly suggest watching it. This is one of those things where, number one, spoiler alert, you're going to walk away with more questions. You are not going to walk away with any, like, oh, okay, this is, you know, exactly what took place. It's just, it's not in it. This is more like watching numerous characters all collide into the story, and you're like, what? I mean, how, what am I watching? Kind of a thing. So if you're like psychologically interested in a lot of like true crime and that type of stuff, um, if you like seeing narcissists on full display, again, that's just my opinion and not qualified to give a diagnosis, um, then you're going to want to watch this one. So that's how it is. So let's go ahead and start talking about just the overall, what's the gist of the case. Okay. So in 2010, the Barnetts, they adopted Natalia. Now this is someone that they thought was a Ukrainian child with a rare form of dwarfism. Now, very quickly, they make some discoveries about her. It leads them to believe that she is much older than what she says, and they claim that they had no idea who she really was. Now, they also claim that she was like displaying disturbing and like violent behavior, and that basically their family was afraid for their life. So, the Barnetts eventually have her legally re-aged, which the judge sets at age 22. They then put her up in an apartment. They like get her set up on government assistance and they continue they continue helping her with some things like you know with groceries they help furnish the apartment that type thing now this lasts for about a year and the apartment is like she's got to go the neighbors are all complaining about her it's not going well so at the same time they are basically like look one of our sons is going to be going to college in canada we're going to be moving there to support him and so they move natalia to another part of town into another apartment uh, it is at this point that a lot of eyebrows are raised and they are hit with child neglect the case blows up they go to court and the whole thing unravels along with their lives now like i said that is literally the 60 second version and that is like one version basically theirs right now what we're gonna do is go ahead and start talking about it. now i want to say this this docuseries like i said it leaves you with more questions it is also very one-sided the biggest people that we're hearing from in this, like the main person is the father, the adoptive father, Mr. Barnett. We're going to talk about him in a minute, okay? The mother, the adoptive mother, Christine, the estranged wife at this point, not estranged, but they got a divorce. Um, she is completely absent from this, right? But we do learn some things about her. We also hear from the oldest son who lives with the father in the basement at this point. And, um, and we'll talk about each of these people. Um, so we're not hearing Natalia's side of the story. Also, we are hearing from a lot of neighbors, two versions of neighbors, the first neighbors and then the secondary neighbors, as well as, you know, the adoptive mother, but that's not so much except for like interviews and stuff like that. Um, so, and when I say that, her new mother. 
so that's the case there. So just understand that this is very one-sided. It's, you know, mostly like told through the father's eyes, the adoptive father, uh, the old adoptive father. So again, just know that before we get into it. And we'll talk more about all of that in depth. Now, again, also remember if you follow me or if you don't follow me, y'all, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a cop. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not any of that fancy stuff, okay? I'm just a guy with a sofa and a little dog and some opinions on true crime. So this is just for entertainment. I am not qualified to give diagnosis, stuff like that. So the things I talk about, literally just my opinion, it, it, that's all. I beg you to do your own research, watch your own stuff, come to your own conclusions and talk about it down in the comment section below. All right, so here we go. Now I will be putting up pictures and whatnot at some times and other times I'll just be sitting here talking to you. Let's go ahead and talk about the father. Okay, he comes in hot on this one, y'all. He starts off in the whole series does and of course it does because they're going to want to pull you in. And they do pull you in, okay? So he comes out with these huge claims. This child is evil, or not child, I guess you should say. You know, in his world, you know, this woman, whoever you know, Natalia really is to him. You know, she's evil, she's tried to kill us, this and that. Here's the thing. The father is a complete character, okay? If you looked up the word unhinged, I swear to God, it's pictures next to it super dramatic half of the thing with this series is you're watching him and his behavior and you're like eh you know like what like this guy was able to adopt somebody i mean honestly you're like what am i watching you know this is crazy literally made for reality tv right if there was somebody who would end up with their own show it would be him now again i'm not qualified to give diagnosis so you know this is just me from watching stuff i don't know if it's narcissism i don't know what's going on there but something is going on there with him okay he just seems shattered and very dramatic so just know that as we talk about him and whatnot okay now he also will describe this wonderful life that him and his wife had and this 5,000 square foot home and like all these fancy cars and, you know, beautiful three sons. And one of the sons is on the spectrum. And, but it sounds like he is like, I would say like a Doogie Howser type thing. If you know, you know, like that's an old TV show where he's like the super smart doctor, you know, like super intelligent son, does, you know, excels at all this stuff. Um, and, and so there's that. Now, also, him and his wife had this foundation for special needs uh, children, and they just kind of sound like they're kind of out in the limelight. Now, I'm painting this picture because I'm going to have some opinions on what I believe their motivations were for adopting Natalia. Now, also, the mom had like this daycare that caters to special needs kids. Yeah, you know, so they're very involved in all this, right? Now. Also, like I told you earlier, you're going to hear from Jake, the oldest son, in this documentary. Not a ton, but enough. And, you know, he'll speak up and whatnot and be like, look, you know, here's this information. Now, he will say that they feared, you know, they were afraid that she was going to harm somebody in the household. He will talk about all this type of stuff. And he'll say that the situation is still very confusing to him and that he wants answers, but he doesn't want to visit, like, all this childhood trauma. So... At the end of the day, before we even get into it, I feel like he is a victim of the entire scenario because whatever it was that took place, I do believe that he saw it up close and personal. He lived through it. And I'm not talking about just Natalia. I'm talking about whatever went on in that household with both of his parents and Natalia and the whole thing as a whole. I think that he knows and I think he's not going to tell, you know, and that's his prerogative, right? Because those are his parents. He lived through a lot of it and it probably is very murky. And he even says like, you know, what everybody's motivations were. He would like to know, but it's almost like that's behind me. I want to move on. And so I do feel like he was a victim of honestly his, his parents in the entire situation in this. Okay, let's continue. Now let's talk about Red Flag Central. Okay. So like I told you, you know, the parents have you know, uh, the, the special needs daycare and this and that and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, you know, we wanted to adopt somebody that we didn't feel like was ever going to have the chance to get loved. And they were going to adopt this little girl from Haiti that fell through when something took place and like Haiti cut off uh, all adoptions and whatnot. So the dad's like, we got this phone call out of the nowhere from this agency in Florida. Yeah. 
first red flag. Okay, so many things went off with this, right? It's in Hollywood, Florida, and he's like, they basically were like, look, you have 24 hours to decide if you want to adopt this girl, Natalia, from Ukraine, this Ukrainian child, Natalia. Uh, she has this rare form of dwarfism. You, know, you got 24 hours. Closed adoption, you're not going to know anything about where she came from. Complete red flags. Complete red flags, okay? This should have been something that they really thought through more, but nope, here we go. Off we run to Florida. More red flags. They say that this uh, adoption agency looks totally run down. It looks like it's in this old strip mall, and like they're just like, uh, is this really it? If you are from South Florida, I've lived there, I've been to Hollywood, I know, and there's some things where I'm like, okay, it's, some of this stuff is like, the way the lay of the land right but i also get where i'm like yeah i can understand and probably mentally see what he's talking about right i probably have driven by a thousand places like that so another red flag another huge red flag the family that had her before flies in drops her off and he describes it as like it's a scene of they're in one part of the agency family comes into the other part of the agency no one's ever met anything like that and then the trade-off is done okay i've got some opinions on that so and again this is my opinion i do not know if you've gone down this rabbit hole and figured this out let me know my opinion is this other family had her and like with any kind of adoption or anyone like this it's going to have these needs and whatnot something went on this family was essentially dumping her off and honestly they probably were like we're gonna you know we'll donate this much money to your agency if you get rid of her for me that's my opinion i don't know that it's fact right it's just kind of the vibe that i got where i was like yeah and again this is all through the filter of the dad but again with the barnett's this should have been serious red flags now i get if it's tugging at your heartstrings but i also question their true motivations as to why they were doing this which we'll talk about in just a minute okay let's keep going now let's get more into some of these red flag central things that the father is saying through his eyes these were what made us start questioning who she was and how old she was and it starts off immediately okay so when they go to adopt her they stay in florida and they're gonna have like a disney week now this makes sense right especially if you are of the means to be able to afford this what a wonderful thing we're all in florida we have this new daughter our sons are here let's make a thing of it right so when they do this they're staying in like a hotel whatever and one night uh the mother is gonna give natalia a bath and she's like calling them in they're like uh hello and she's like look um she has fully grown you know uh i don't know how to say it on here um in the nether regions her hair is fully grown in right so they're like uh is that true for like a six-year-old you know like what's up um that's first red flag and again this is all we're talking about his opinion here he also says that then they soon thereafter find out that she has started you know having her cycles you know her monthly visitor and she's been hiding this now, Natalia will deny this uh, in interviews and stuff like that, uh, and she'll have another side to that to say. We'll get to that in a little bit, because we're not going to get too much into her side, just side note here, but she does have her own series coming out with her side of the story, so there's that. It'll come out this summer, but I'm just telling you, letting you know that she is saying that that's not how that went, but this is what the father's saying, so, you know, two major red flags. Oh my God, we have somebody, you know, this young who is having their cycle and, you know, has clearly... Uh, hit you know puberty and possibly beyond so you know that's not good now also just so you know i am looking down at some notes if i tend to look down here that's what's going on at times now the dad will say after about four months this dark side of her comes out and he's like describing this whole thing where it's like look she would pick on the youngest son she would always want to sit next to him in the car seat in the car and she would urinate on him she would you know take a uh, defecate smeared on things Things, put it everywhere and the son uh the older son who we hear from he would confirm this he would also say that his mother asked him to pee in her bed almost as like retaliation or something and that he did this a few times now i'm not holding this against him and this is what i'm talking about when i say i feel like he's a victim of the situation and of his parents because that's like not right right you know what i mean like there's you know clearly something going on with natalia um emotional 
things going on here. This is not n normal, right? So also to retaliate against said person, I don't care how old she really is, you know, and to get your kid to do it, it's just weird, right? So there's that. Now also, you know, the son would say, as well as the father, uh, they, she would destroy their things. And the dad was like, she would take one of their things and like wait till she got somewhere near traffic and like throw it out in the road to try and like, have them run over by a car, you know? And to me, I was like, I wasn't there, but because the dad is so dramatic and extra, I'm just like, really? Is that how that went down? You know, kind of a thing. Could I see Natalia destroying their things? Yes. Some of these behaviors, because I've, you know, I've worked in this world, I've been of this world, not like that I'm a foster kid or anything like that, but you know, I've worked with foster kids and whatnot, and I've seen some of these behaviors. And so a lot of this, I was like, yeah, this is kind of like some of the run in the mill type stuff, right? Some of these acting out, wanting to, you know, this is what happens when you've been abandoned your whole life, right? You, you act it out in different ways. And so some of this, even though it might be shocking to hear, wasn't that shocking to me because I've witnessed this before. And so something like this where like they're destroying the other kids' things, like picking on one kid or, you know, the it, this was, you know, not, you know, abnormal to me in that world. So, you know, there's that. Now, what was abnormal is some of the behaviors that were described. Now, the father would say, oh, I woke up one night and she was at the bed with knife and saying that she's going to kill us and you know she, we had to hide all the sharp things and the son would confirm this you know now that is of concern and so you know i look at this in one way you know there's some behavior that's concerning no matter what um but it also can be like okay well look let's you know examine this you know we don't know what she's been through again doesn't matter how old she is we're going to get into the age thing here in a little bit just so you know i'm playing devil's advocate along the way with this you know there's some things that are concerning but also it's like we process trauma differently uh and so while this is not healthy and whatnot it's not dangerous now when you get into the world of you know and again this is allegedly okay she's threatening our lives she's you know i'm waking up with a knife at the end of my bed this is not healthy that's not good um that is concerning right and especially when you have small children in the house this is very concerning um one thing that this case has been very famous for is that it's very much like the movie orphan also if you look at uh the movie this is maybe you know orphans more recent but the good son with macaulay culkin um you know, these things are of concern right when somebody in your household is threatening everybody's life so if that is really true again this is what they're saying we don't know um but but regardless, these were major red flags for the family. Now, here's the thing. So they will find a doctor, and I'm talking about the Barnetts, that will say, yep, she's a sociopath. She's an adult sociopath. You know, the, this is uh, you know, not good. This brings us into some of the behaviors that will come out in regards to age. But to get there, we have to talk about some of the neighbors as well. So let's start segmenting this into the neighbors. And we're going to first talk about how she ends up with neighbors of her own, by, of her own through the process of being re-aged and moved out of the home. So like I said, the series will eventually dive into these neighbors of hers at an apartment complex. Well, in order to get there, you have to understand how she got to this apartment complex. And that was by being re-aged legally through the court system to be age 22. So in a nutshell, what happens is they go to the courts and they have all these different tests and stuff like this. And the judge is like, okay, so you stop aging at the age of four, or I'm sorry, 18. She hasn't aged in four years. So we're going to say that she was 18 when you got her. So she's 22 years old. Now, clearly this signals a bunch of stuff. She is a young adult this type thing now here's where we're going to say this i don't know the laws in indiana but i know in north carolina and this is like within the last five years i guess you know you age out of the foster care system when you are 18 years old you know that whole world or whatever there's a program called and i don't know the official name of it but i know here it was like 18 to 21 and it's like this almost this next step where if you're in the system you can say i want to live with this family these are the goals that i'm going to do during this program and this is what's going to happen and it's like almost like another umbrella of care um where the state is kind of stepping away a little bit it, it's like a, a bridge to adulthood for children in the system 
this time and it's another way for them to go to college and that type thing so when i heard this and that they were put they put her at age 22 in my mind and again just from my experience i was like oh well that makes sense because now she's completely out of the system and again it could be different in indiana i don't know um but that was a red flag to me for the court systems for the parents and that type thing because i was like got it how convenient um and again at the end we're gonna talk about what i really think her age is and whatnot because this goes into that and we'll get into a little bit more but just for now where we're at no they have her legally re-aged she is a 22 so she is an adult right um they find her this apartment apartment they move her into said apartment they help her furnish it they help get groceries they get her own food stamps government assistance this type thing and this is paying for these things okay now the neighbors all have something to say about natalia okay so let's talk about that now this segment is started off with natalia making a 911 phone call and basically turning herself in saying she's stalking a neighbor and she's afraid that she's going to hurt them and then when we hear from all these neighbors you're like yeah it probably was you know a, a legitimate call right so let's talk about what some of the neighbors said so they talked to several of them and one of them i think her name was sue or whatever she talks about you know well i came home one day and these groceries were out and the mother's sitting in the car and i'm watching you know natalia try and get the groceries in and she's like you know can i help you and the mother never comes in to help and she basically just sits there and watches and this is a theme where everybody's like yeah we never really saw the parents and if any of them we saw the father the mother was very hands off now as we'll learn more information about the mother in this case this sounds like par for the course right now essentially the there's a mixed bag coming from all these neighbors and one thing i want us to take away from what the neighbors said because there's two Two sets of neighbors number one these neighbors we're talking about at the first apartment and then the secondary neighbors at the second apartment the first neighbors at this apartment even though they got to the point where they did not like natalia they did not feel comfortable with her there was red flags with her behavior there is always this question of can this person really take care of themselves and care for themselves with her situation with her disability you know we feel sorry for her but we don't feel safe around her either type thing there is also a very big question of the age of her um and that's the thing kind of like with this whole case right is how old is this girl right uh but again we're gonna get to that i want to kind of save that for later because it kind of you know a lot of my opinions on what went down it's like regardless of age i feel this way right and then the age thing obviously is a whole the other thing but we'll get to that okay so you know i'm just reading from my notes here so another neighbor tells the story of natalia coming over and playing with her his grandson uh, and he says that she told him she was 26 and she's like she smelled her hair was dirty a lot of the neighbors will say like her clothes were unkempt she was dirty she was smelly not good hygiene that type thing now a couple across the street who also had kids you know they were like natalia came over introduced herself very friendly you know and everybody's like at first like you know they think she's a kid but then they talk to her and it's like oh this is clearly not a kid like this is an older person and basically what ends up happening is this whole thing of we feel sorry for and this that and the other goes away you know because it's like eh, you know there's something up with this and she quickly wears her welcome out now one thing that happens during this also is that because the neighbors are like can she really take care of herself you know how old is she whatever cps or the child protective services is contacted and one of the co the person who contacts comes out to investigate is somebody who had like worked on this case before but didn't know that Natalia had been re-aged. And so this whole scenario starts up with Natalia being in contact with this woman named Heather and the father trying to circumvent this and being like, you know, did you contact her? Why did you contact her? Why is she talking to you? What lies are you telling her? This kind of a thing and deleting contacts from Natalia's phone. And this goes on like this. And again, this is kind of like, mm, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about this, right? And they show a videotape of him, you know, I guess his videotape of him videoing her with these conversations okay this whole scenario though begins to deteriorate people are describing things like we 
come home and she's in our house and you know going through our fridge and doing weird stuff and they're like so we start locking our doors and you know um she's coming on to the men and you know like the older men like old older men uh there was like one guy who another one neighbor was like she would go in his house and spend hours in there and you know you'd probably do the math on what was happening another guy tells a story about he was in the laundry room and she basically offered him sex and he's like you need to stay away you know i got out of there you know this kind of a thing People with small children, with male children, are talking about how she's, you know, doing creepy, you know, stuff like that. There was another situation where she was rolling around in the grass with this boy, again, a kid, and then she starts trying to unzip his pants, and the father comes out and grabs the boy up. I mean, this is not good. Now, the one neighbor who, like, the woman who was like, I came home, and, you know, she was in my refrigerator, and the one that helped her, and was like, with well, the mother, you know, was like, just watching me help her take the groceries in. She had a couple of grandsons, and apparently, like, one day they were like, uh, yeah, uh, Granny, um, we kicked Natalia out of the house because she was making us uncomfortable, like, with being close and touching and stuff like this. So, this doesn't go over well. People are complaining to the apartment complex, and they're like, her bizarre behavior, she's, you know, not clean, She's made, we don't feel safe with her around our children and the neighbors are all talking like, keep her away from your children. So the couple that lives across the street tells one incident where Natalia just comes into their home and is like going towards their son's bedroom, you know? So there's clearly these boundary issues. Now they'll also say like they would leave and she would call like four or five times just to be like, what's going on? And they eventually had to be like, we're at a soccer game for our son. You need to leave us alone. You know, we'll talk to you when we get home. And as soon as they got home, she'll be running over. Now, another thing the neighbors would describe is her nonchalant about being like, well, yeah, I tried to kill my parents. And so they moved me out to the basement at one point or the garage, you know, and just kind of like, well, I pulled a knife on them. And, you know, so there's that. And just acting like, you know, whatever to this. And this freaked them out, obviously, because you start adding all this behavior up and it's like, okay, she's coming under her kids she's talking about pulling a knife on her parents like it's no big deal this that and the other you know this is just all sorts of wrong and so the apartment complex basically is like look we have to go through a certain thing to be able to get her out of the apartment complex well basically once her lease comes up they're like she's got to go now let's pause for a second to talk about the neighbor situation so here's one of my things when you want to talk about who i believe and not believe in this type thing and again i'll get more into it in a little bit but i just want to pause what's on my mind i tend to give weight to what these neighbors are saying because these neighbors didn't have any motivation none of them seemed to be exploiting natalia they were simply neighbors you know when they're describing this behavior i'm like yeah this is very red flag this is not good now on the other side of that i look at it this way where i'm like this person again we're not even talking about age i don't care at this point if she is 30 or if she is eight years old this is someone who is you know has you know some limiting physical disabilities right she's going to have a hard time getting to cabinets opening things this type of stuff also this is somebody who has been through we don't know what emotionally through her lifetime there are going to be issues with that so when i hear of this person and again i don't care if she's 30 or 10 or whatever i mean i would care even more if she was a young child right because this would make even more sense right but if you're going on the notion that she's really an adult or a teenager you know and bugging the neighbors like this we're not talking about the creepy you know i'm coming onto your son stuff let's talk about simply going over boundaries i'm calling my neighbors five times a day to see what they're doing i'm going over their house as soon as they get home I am lonely. I want to belong to a group, to a family is what I get from that. And uh, that part I feel sorry for. That part gives me concern. When you get into the creepy, like she's hitting on our sons and me like that, that's issues. That's, this is coming out of it. This is not good. And this is how I feel about that with the adoptive parents, the Barnett's. This is not a person, regardless of the age, that needs to be just put 
put out somewhere in the community and forgotten, right? This is somebody who needs services. This is somebody who needs counseling. This is somebody who needs assistance. And there's things like this for this. And I feel like for them to put out somebody, now even worse, if you go with the notion that she's a small child, right? Obviously this is not good. Um, but even regardless, it doesn't matter. Like whether you on paper, she's 22, whatever to put her out and to basically just pawn her off from the community, like, here you go, you know, and to kind of cut off everything, I don't think that's right either. I feel like there's plenty of services out there that she should have been a part of because she's clearly just going to the neighbors. I mean, she doesn't know really what to do, right? And so there's like life skill stuff that needs to take place. And then if she is a danger, if you feel like this person is a danger in your own household, whether it's violently or s -ain, you or your family members, to then put her out in the community and like, let's just stick her here, is incredibly irresponsible. Incredibly irresponsible. Because you see that then she's starting to do it to other people. You know, I don't think that any of these neighbors had any reason to lie, right? I think that they were telling the truth. I think she did creep them out. I think that there was something there. The fact that multiple ones of them are sitting here saying, yes, yeah, she's saying that she pulled a knife on the family and did this and that, this adds up to what the family is saying. Now again, okay, I get it. You've got three kids. You feel in danger. And my question is, isn't there somewhere you can go to say, um, yeah, we need help with this. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like their answer was just create her and throw her in an apartment, you know, uh, let, let everybody else deal with it type thing. Right. Um, I do feel like they were trying to do what they could, like, let's get her groceries. Let's do this, let's do that. But it was also in the context of trying to avoid trouble for themselves. If that makes sense. So we'll get more into that here in a little bit, but let's keep going. So now after this, this is where we get to, she's worn her welcome out. It's time to go. Now the son, the genius kind of son, he's supposed to be going to some master's program or like some fancy thing in Canada. And the parents are like, well, according to the dad, remember, you know, well, we found out that we were going to be moving to Canada to support our son's education. And so they're like, okay, we got to put Natalia somewhere. Um, and again, the fact that they are doing this is another reason why I think, you know, okay, when you get into the argument of how old is she really, um, you know, it's almost like, why would you be trying to hide her if she was an illegally and truly an adult? You know what I'm saying? Under the guise of, well, we're trying to help her. You know, I don't really believe that. But anyways, so they have to find a new apartment for her. And this is where everything unravels. So they find this place and it's in what will come out later that the mother calls a white trash part of town. Well, you know this is not going to go over well with that part of town when this comes out in court and whatnot. Um, it's basically like there's evidence of text messages or a voicemail or whatever the mother's saying. It's a white trash part of town or someone or the dad said it, quoting the mother, whatever. And uh, basically like nobody will notice, you know, she'll go unnoticed because it's like this sketchy part of town. Okay, so they find this apartment. It's on the second floor. It's not handicapped. You name it, it's like completely not the place she should be in, right? And they put her in here and they hightail it to Canada. Okay. You can only imagine. Now, this is like in a house, right? So the other place is like a fourplex or like a complex like that, right? This is like a house where she's having to go up these stairs. You know, I mean, and they're like, she can't really even use a can opener, right? I mean, let alone haul up these stairs and stuff. Again, I stick by the fact of what, what are you thinking? Like, what well, this is what I, I feel like they're, they're trying to pawn her off and hide her. You know, there's agencies that can help with this, right? Um, it doesn't make sense to me. So, and again, this part of town that she's in is not a great place. Now the dad will be like, you know, her place for her adult GED was like a block away. The store that takes her food stamps is right here. There's this, there's that. Again, whether she's a child or a, a legally an adult, or at this point she would have been older, like, you know what I mean? Like whatever, but especially a child, right? Um, this is not the part of town she needs to be in at all. She's a vulnerable human being, right? Whether, whatever she's doing, she doesn't need to be in this part of town, okay? 
do a little bit better, get her somewhere or with an agency that can assist with this. And that's just what kind of like leaves me at certain points. But anyways, so they go to the sun, they move to Canada. Now here is where almost immediately she is gathered up by who now who she's living with, right? The new apparent adoptive parents, whatever you want to call them, Cynthia and Antoine Manns. Okay, so remember how I said the first neighbors had no motivation, there's no exploitation? Okay, I have very conflicting feelings with this new family, parents I should say, because right away it's like, okay, well they drain her food stamp card and they immediately within a couple of weeks have her social security check signed over to them. And she basically moves in. And now the mother, her name Cynthia, will say, you know, that she went up there and she's seen that kind of like the level that, you know, Natalia's living in, like, what? You know, you're going up these stairs, you can't you can barely feed yourself, you can't even reach most of the cabinets, like, you know, come hang out with us. And she basically never went home. And so this is where you get into, you know, they did the food stamp account and all this type of stuff. Now, Cynthia also already has a couple of kids. And so this, you know, to me is probably very appealing to Natalia. Now, Cynthia will also see in interviews and whatnot that none of that crazy stuff ever happened with them that happened with the Barnetts, you know, and that they don't believe this and that they stand by Natalia. And uh, Natalia and Cynthia would go on Dr. Phil, and this was kind of like another famous little episode of this, and, you know, have this interview on there. It's Dr. Phil. There's a lot of unanswered questions with it. You can YouTube it and watch the interview and whatnot. Um, I don't trust the motivations of this new family either, to be honest. Um, and this is what I'm talking about, where I'm like, okay, she goes to this bad part of town and immediately somebody swoops her up and it's like, oh, here, we'll use your food stamps. You can sign your, this will pay for this and blah, blah, blah. But again, you know, the Barnetts, I mean, Six one half tons the other, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, look where she ended up. So let's pause for a second and talk about this. Okay. Natalia seems to be settled and happy here. Now, again, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. If it works for all of them and no one is being exploited, then great. Because at the heart of this, I think Natalia wants to belong. I think Natalia wants a family. Every human being wants that. We all want a sense of belonging, right? And maybe she found it with them. And then great, right? My experience in working in this system again and volunteering and being around other families with foster kids stuff like this is yes, it, you can find a placement with one child goes this way and then you get them over here and it goes a different way, right? It's a vibe. It's, is everyone happy? Is the child happy here? And if they're not, they're gonna act out. Maybe they didn't have these experiences with her, right? Maybe it all clicked in a certain way. We don't know. We haven't heard Natalia's side of this yet. Again, she's coming out with a series, her own series. I'm dying to hear her side of the story. So, you know, there's all that. And we'll get into a little bit more here after we talk about, like, the very last episode and some of the bombshell stuff that came out of it. So let's finish rounding out the series, and then I'll talk about, like, my overall thoughts. Okay, so remember how I said that the dad was, like, kind of unhinged and whatnot? Not kind of, but completely... So by the last episode, woo, chitty chitty bang bang on this one, it's on full display, y'all. And I'm talking, I'm like sitting here watching like, oh my God. I mean, absolutely next level. So at this point, you know, they've gone to court, they've gone to this trial, it's been going for years, all this type of stuff. While well, all these like stuff starts coming out during this and like some hidden text messages on the wife. Y'all, if you are not buckled up, buckle up, right, okay? um plays because this part i was like oh my god so all these text messages come out and there's all this evidence of the wife cheating on him and all this type of stuff right and having these like sultry affairs so then there's this guy and i'm not sure of the i'm gonna the term that he uses is little person and again i'm not sure i don't want to insult anybody or anything like that um so i'm just gonna use that that's the term that he used um but he's you know like a little person right and so she reaches out to him to kind of get advice about hey we're gonna be adopting natalia what is it 
Well, then she starts talking all this smutty trash to him. And I'm talking cheap and damn. I'm talking clench your pearls. Just not proper. Um, <laughs> completely not proper, y'all. And this is the stuff of these cases, y'all, where I'm watching it and I'm like, what? How? How do we end up here? How do we always end up here with these cases where I'm like, I didn't see this coming at all. You could have asked me a million questions about this. I'm like, nope, didn't see this coming. Y'all, he talks about some of these text messages and I'm like, you know, she said it's, well, cheap and tall three pictures to you. Nudie pictures. So this goes on with that, right? And so the father's finding all this stuff out in addition to all this stuff, right? So they're divorced, all this stuff. He hates her, the whole nine yards. Okay. The trial comes, basically he's found not guilty, okay? Now, the dramatics leading up to this, I mean, y'all can only imagine. I mean, he's crying, he's, and I get it's emotional, right? It's like, the, the 12 jurors, they knew in less than an hour that I wasn't guilty. Now, here's the thing, at the trial, the jury could not know. All they could know is that she was 22 years old. So this turned into a case of like abandoning like a, a disabled person, not a child. And so then when they talked to the jury, like the head person or whatever, she's like right off the road, we took a thing and they all thought she was guilty. He was guilty. I'm sorry. And she was like, but then as we went, like the judge was very specific, boom, 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 boom. This is what it has to be. Um, they were like, we're going to have to find him not guilty because they basically thought he was guilty. Right. Um, now, of course, if you, enter in the actual age of the stuff you're gonna be like oh my god completely guilty right then almost immediately they're like okay well look you're gonna have to testify against your wife long story short spoiler alert they drop the charges against the wife later because they don't have enough evidence to get a conviction so the dad and the wife are off the hook right now here's the thing they have never swayed from their story of this right like they might hate each other but it is what it is this was a monster that we adopted okay now let's get into so there's that that's a nutshell of it right let's get into the age aspect of the story because that is at the center of this okay so during this the birth mother is tracked down she's from ukraine ukrainian i've read some other interviews with her she's like no natalia was 2003 is when she was born the child was six years old this is legit right um they do a dna test to say yes this is the mother and this is what she's saying now of course then the parents were like, well, no, we did this test over here. And it said, you know, she was this age and whatnot at the end of the day. And it seems like every single test you could possibly do, it's like, but then there's this and then there's that. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. And again, we're going to look through the lens of um, what the father says. Okay, basically, she, you know, if she's six, eight years old, whatever it is, she already had puberty. Now, again, there is, you can do early puberty, this type of stuff. A big component in this, and then we're gonna also start talking about my opinions of the age thing. So at one point when the father is talking and he's like, you know what, we had this doctor who was like, you know what, I just happen to have another family with this a child, a six-year-old child with the same condition in Indiana. What are the chances? So they set up a meeting and like a play date and they go. Now we will hear from this child as well as the mother of the child and we will see pictures of natalia and i'm going to try and find one to put up here at this play date with the child let's not even get into physical evidence of the age but let's just go based on looks and whatnot a hundred percent if you look at these two people next to each other and say they're each six you'll be like absolutely no way absolutely no way like no way right one of them is clearly a child and one of them looks not six years old um other things were they set up a thing for like somebody that they knew who spoke ukrainian and they were going to do that and they're like yes yeah, she clearly d has never heard ukrainian right and we were supposed to have gotten her at this age when is she like no words and stuff like that um also multiple people are saying you know the and a lot of times the neighbors all were like in no way this was a kid right this was clearly an older person um her vocabulary just all this type of stuff um but then you get into the evidence of the age where it's like, okay, well, the mother was born in 1979 and she would have been 10 years old if she had Natalia, if she's lying about it. 
Now again, you know, this has happened before, right? Um, but there's basically this other stuff that's been done that's like, no, she really is a kid. Um, here's my thing. My gut feeling watching it was this, on the age thing. I was like, I don't know if she was truly six years old when they got her. You know, do I think they adopted a 22-year-old? 20, no. I do not. Or an 18-year-old? No, I do not. I think she was probably a little bit older than what she said, um, or was told, right? Um, I do not think that she was, like, this grown adult at that point, though. Um, because there are pictures where I'm like, we can tell those facial structure when I've changed. But again, there's other stuff where I'm just like, yeah, she looks older. Because also, here's this. Now, I'm just speaking freely at this point without my notes. So when they interviewed the mother that did the play date with her daughter who was six years old at the time and showed the pictures of them and then they interviewed them obviously later and that girl was 14 at the time she looked like what natalia looked like then facial structure all that type stuff and so i was like okay yeah like you know there's something going on there um and the mother was like yeah they they never got together again and she basically was like i didn't think that this was i felt like we were doing a play date with like an adult like not another six-year-old like it didn't i was like oh that's her kind of a thing and a lot of people said this where they were just like i could tell she was older than you know my kids you know like but by how much we don't know and here's the thing <laughs> we don't know right like you just don't know it's like okay the mother's saying no she was born this year this kind of thing i mean okay yeah <laughs> like all right and the mother's story about it is this that she had natalia and the doctors come to her and like there's no use even taking her home and again i don't know how it works over there you know what i mean like what you know because the way they're describing it i'm like this sounds horrible but they're basically like oh, she's you know this is her situation she's gonna need all these surgeries all this type of stuff yada 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 and so basically she doesn't take her home and they put her up for adoption and so i'm just like eh, like you know uh, what so we don't really know what happened and according to natalia she obviously doesn't either she was you know she doesn't know that um I think personally she was whisked off to America probably rather quickly and shuffled from home to home to home to home and God knows what happened to her there. You know, I think probably her age was smudged a little bit to make her more attractive to adopting families, you know, because she's going to obviously come with a plethora of things. So let's talk about like just some overall thoughts here. So about the age, do I think that she was 22 when the judge said she was 22? No, I do not. I think she was younger. Um, do I think she was six when they said she was six? No, I do not. I think she was older. There's a gray zone there. Do I think anybody will ever know? No. Do I think that they've done all the definitive testing they could do? No. Do I 100% believe the birth mother? No. Do I 100% believe the adopted parents of our nuts? Absolutely not. Do I 100% believe the new parents, Cynthia, and their motivations? No. Do um, you see where I'm going with this? The series doesn't tie any of these loose ends up. Now, again, Natalia is going to have her own thing to come out, and we'll have to hear from her. Do I think that she did some of this crazy behavior? Yes. Um, do I think some of it is abnormal? Absolutely. Do I think some of it sounds unsafe? 100%. Um, would I be nervous if I had small children in my house and somebody started doing that? Yeah. Does that mean I would want to abandon the person? No. Um hearing here is where we get into this part do i think it was wrong of the barnets to put her in this apartment and do what they did yes again i've already said it i believe what happened is this and here's here let's get into their motivations let's talk about that for a minute i think that the barnets had a plethora of issues okay i think they were the last people who needed to ever adopt a child right and i would question having you know their own kids in their household right i mean there's a lot of stuff going on there a lot you can just look at the father's behavior and immediately be like i don't trust where he says if you follow the cases we follow here imagine seeing daryl brooks leticia stalk lori day belvalo just off free free range chicken in it and like just acting however they want to act right which we have but you know what i'm saying like in their own docu-series like trying to defend their innocence 
it's kind of the vibe you got here is you know this guy just happened to be found not guilty he lucked out right uh it's that now the mother doesn't say anything right but just the evidence that we see of these text messages the sexting the text messages between her and the father the the eyewitnesses of the neighbor stuff like this i'm like yeah there's a lot going on there too i tend to side and believe the most from the neighbors in the first apartment. None of these people were using her money for anything. They felt sorry for her. They saw someone that probably shouldn't have been left alone. Didn't matter how old she was. They questioned her ability to take care of herself and questioned why she was there. Now what ends up happening is she becomes such a nuisance and there's this love love we still feel sorry but this is becoming a lot. We don't even want to go outside of our own home. This is someone who was abandoned in the community and made the community's problem. Who should never have been. She should have had access to, access to services and that type thing. And so when you get into like the charges of like, you know, child abandonment, well, obviously they finagled that, right? I personally think that that was done in such a way, who knows if they knew this judge or whatever, to be able to say, nope, 22, we're done, there you go. But they didn't do that. They kept keeping up with it. And I personally think that was to keep their thumb down on the situation to be like, what's going on with this? Uh, because there was a level of guilt, right? Um they wanted her gone and then moving to canada was going to be the here we go this is how we're going to wash our hands of this officially it almost makes you wonder if they were waiting to be like we know regardless of the age now it's done enough to where we can leave and feel okay about it in their world but that clearly didn't happen i feel like if natalia's with this new family you know if they're all getting something out of it if she's getting a sense of belonging and they're getting money or whatever and they feel like they're helping someone out then great and if she's balanced and doing well in that then awesome right who's gonna deny that i think what natalia needs is services i think that what she needs is therapy i do not know what it is like to be in her scenario i cannot fathom what it would be like to get passed around from home to home to home to home to allegedly come from ukraine and then get shuffled around from all these houses right who knows what that would do or cause you to do now again the behaviors that the neighbors are describing are very concerning and someone who is clearly now an adult who might have this history of being very inappropriate with people much younger than them uh of the opposite sex and also much older than them i mean there's evidence of her you know coming on to people now another thing i forgot to say is that you know a lot of these institutions failed her the police weren't doing anything she went to some kind of mental health institution they didn't want her there because they said she was propositioning men for you know uh money for sex so there's a lot of stuff that took place in this that you're just like what you know like why it, it, it's like everything in one failed her and so i'm just like yeah this is somebody who needs a support system who never got it and then we need to go from there now again when you talk about the age and this kind of stuff i mean to me i'm like i again i don't I don't think that she was like because some of the pictures when you look at her i'm like no she looks younger right but then you can tell where i'm like i don't believe that she was that young when they got her now i'm not trying to say again i'm not trying to add on 10 15 years either right um but i don't think that she was the age that she really was when they adopted her but i'm also like this is somebody who's in like survival mode right like this is someone who's trying to like keep off the streets i mean i don't know what you would do i don't know what i would do in that scenario uh you know now from the barnett side of it again i just feel like that this was like a, oh we're gonna adopt somebody and it was self-serving they weren't trying to help somebody they were trying to make themselves look like you know goody two shoes look what we did we adopted you know this girl from haiti or we adopted this you know girl this the, the with dwarfism from here we're doing so good i think a hundred percent that's what it was and then they got in this scenario where she's a real person with real severe issues and those were coming out she probably also sensed that god only knows what was going on in the house if you see the father's behavior i mean my god 
can you imagine? You know, we talk about here, like, with dealing with these narcissists and stuff, like, what's everyday like? Like, who let the sugar out? Like, the meltdown that would occur. I can only fathom in that. Now, some of the videotape evidence that they show of Natalia being like, I'm reading the Bible to get rid of my evil thoughts. Or, I was farting all over my younger brother to get back at him. I mean, it's like, yeah, this is weird, right? And then hearing from the son saying, yeah, we didn't feel safe with her in the house. I mean, I believe him more than I do the parents. The Barnetts and whatnot, basically these people who are the adults in the scenario, whether it's the new adoptive people or the Barnetts, whatever, I don't believe them. The neighbors of the first apartment I do, because again, there was no, they didn't have, these were just neighbors and they were just, they had nothing to gain. And like most of them, I think I would feel the same way as we felt sorry. We felt concerned that how can this person take care of themselves but also we have our own family and we're now feeling unsafe and we're now feeling like we're making boundaries and it's not working we're coming home and finding this person breaking and entering you know this is not good right and yes people at this point need to be brought in but it seems like they were and just nothing was ever done I'm surprised that the parents did not catch charges. Now, clearly the court of public opinion, I mean, do with that what you will. Um, they're going to always have that. And again, I don't think they're all on the up and up anyways, right? I mean, just look at the evidence that came out of the stuff that was going on. This is all very twisted stuff. So... I'm not going to really reach a full verdict on this until I hear from Natalia's, but from what I just saw, I'm like, I don't really know who to believe in this, uh, other than not really anybody. And the only credible people that I come back to is like the neighbors, because again, they had no reason to exploit the situation. They were almost like stuck in it. Um, and so that's the most sound people's opinion that I go with. So anyways, y'all, if you watched it, my God. God, let me know what you think about in the com what you thought about in the comments. Now, let me say this: I watched this on Investigation Discovery, but I also bought one of them on Prime uh, Video, Amazon Prime. So I don't know how it works in other countries because I know when I did the post, a lot of people asked me about it, and I don't know if Prime's like you can like you know anywhere, but that's where you can get it. And again, if you're wanting it just to be like, well, let me get to the bottom of this and the answers, you ain't gonna get it. Okay, you know, you're just not gonna get it from here. You would do better to do like your own research and watch you know read articles and stuff but even there you're not going to get it this is one of those things that nobody will ever know nobody will ever know except natalia you know and again she might not even know right i mean i don't think she probably really knows truly how old she is um and then other scientific testing which does seem to point to she was really six years old you know or like that age or whatever um so there's that i think we'll I can't imagine we would not hear from the father again because he's such a train wreck. Um, I just, you know, I think that there's a lot of showmanship being put on in this and a lot of bad acting on his part. So we'll just have to kind of see. Anyways, the, that's where you can watch it. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sorry this is like a super long video. Uh, and I'm sorry I just had to talk through this one like this and not really look at clips and whatnot. But it was basically the only way I knew how to do this. So anyways, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you're still watching, drop some sofas in the comment section if you want to. And if you don't, that's okay too. Anyways, until we gather around my little phone and my little water bottle, I'll see y'all soon.